Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Innovator Spotlight. My name is Irina Shamas, and I oversee revenue and strategy at Three Black Dot, a gaming and an entertainment company. Um, I also sometimes happen to teach a summer course at, um, at UCLA Anderson on digital marketing and entrepreneurship. Today, I'm so honored to interview Sean Gunn. Sean was, um, fun fact, on The Breakfast Club um, yesterday, um, and he's with us today. And I think it's just such an incredible opportunity to learn from, um, you know, Sean and his career um, firsthand. Um, speaking of his career, um, He's a founder, um, he's a senior executive, and he is, uh, he's played a key role in helping multiple companies successfully exit. He has raised millions in venture funding and created over billion dollars in value for investors. Today, Sean is a co-founder and CEO of Play Labs, an artificial intelligence driven wagering and data analytics platform for video gamers. Let's have a look at Play. Introducing Play, an AI-driven platform that watches video gameplay as it happens. Play keeps track of on-screen action and determines a match winner in a split second with instant payouts on head-to-head -head wagering between players. Players invite Play to watch games by linking their personal Twitch gameplay stream. Sign up is easy and simple. Players can host their own match, join a match set up by another player, chat, deposit, and withdraw cash, and purchase match tokens all inside one simple mobile app and 100% of that player's earnings are credited straight to their play wallet instantly making cutting edge gaming even more exciting and rewarding from start to finish win more than glory play on sean welcome what a great introduction um, thank you for having me of course no it's definitely it's 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 absolutely our honor so sean let's just dive right into it um mm -hmm. we've just seen the video for play so tell us and how did the how did how did it come about yeah you know uh, like all things to solve a problem right i've been a gamer uh my entire life uh and had long wondered uh, with my co-founder, why gamers can't make money on uh, on their skill level or the time they spend in uh, the favorite favorite worlds or or uh, titles, um, and so it kind of drove uh, drove us over the last five years to kind of think of ways that we could seamlessly not only find monetization for users and we landed on wagering, but more importantly, do it in a way that was seamless, frictionless, and and using some pretty cool tech uh, to collect data to help them as well. Right. Um, and then let's talk about the gaming market, right? Because I think they're historically, I mean, both you and I are, 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 are now in this space, but historically, you know, gaming was not necessarily seen as, um, you know, a serious business. Um, sure. uh, so, right. So I think with pandemic, we kind of almost like hit that inflection point by a lot of kind of senior marketers and executives. And, and there's a lot like there, there is really now like a realization that how big that market is and how valuable it is as well. So tell us, yeah, tell us a little bit more about, you know, why gaming? Yeah, well, you know, pre pre pandemic, this was still a, a huge market, right? Um, I think all of us in yeah. gaming and tech uh, knew that um, the pandemic clearly put that on steroids um, and, and really kind of showed the value, I think, to, to middle America, if you will, or mom and pop. Um, you know, we're talking about a market that is uh, somewhere in the range of about three to, to almost trending to four billion players globally across different gaming sectors. I think last note I saw was around 3.1, 3.2. Um, and uh, previous to the pandemic was growing at kind of, a, you know, 10 to a 15 or 20 percent clip. Uh, Verizon put out a study uh, just last year during the pandemic that gaming had been growing at a 75 percent growth rate. You know, obviously that'll probably come back to uh, reality a little bit uh, as we move out of this phase, but still um, huge market growing at a huge clip. And I think we're starting to see different services um, being layered into uh, an already blustering market. And then speaking of that market, like who is who is the gamer that, you know, that kind of who is the gamer that plays for? So our gamer uh, is a little different because of the nuance of the wagering aspect, right? So 
we fall under the skill based wagering laws here in the US and in other territories globally as we expand, um, which means that you need to be 18 years uh, or older to participate. And so we've integrated tech to track identity and monitor, you know, uh, keep the, the young folks uh, out of the equation, if you will. Um, but the core gamer is really that 18 to 35 uh, range uh, user, um, both guys and gals, because uh, the ladies are making a really strong push and we want to we want to be a part of that that movement. Um, and, and typically, our players are a little different. They're not the esports uh, gamer. Um, our user has a career that's not directly gaming related every day. They're lawyers, doctors, they're in college, they're moms, they're dads, and, and traditionally have used gaming as a way to entertain themselves, unwind, you know, play four or five matches if they can a week of their favorite match or gaming title. And so we want to add the added uh, energy and, and monetization of being able to kind of win uh, in those moments. So as our moniker says, you know, uh, our, our player uh, doesn't want to be the best in the world. They just want to be the best in the moment, right? And so when they have those moments during the course of the week, we want to heighten that, that uh, play activity. So you're saying that all of us are gamers, right? And, and, and plays for all of us? Yes, we are all gamers, uh, even though some of us probably don't represent ourselves as gamers. Um, I, I think most of us uh, kind of fit into that category, even socially, right? But but clearly we're going after initially in phase one, the console market, then PC, and then we'll evolve from there. Yeah. And I think this is just such an interesting concept, right? Because a lot of the times when you talk about gaming, you kind of envision that hardcore gamer, right? And there is right. that audience, but that audience is so much so much more specific and actually if you look at the market size right it's so much smaller can see uh, compared to kind of the larger population right it's anyone playing you know on their commute in their free time it's their hobby right and it's a passion right. more than um you know a career right when right. which is what what it is for some of the esports players um no really um really really interesting so um how would you you know so like walk us walk us through play um you know how would you know how would i as a casual gamer um engage on the platform yeah yeah i'll talk about the the platform itself and then some of the kind of cool tech we we've, we've created um we make it very simple for users to engage on play because we know that um there's still you know somewhere in the range of about 50 percent of the target audience for us for us has never wagered on a match right so making that um, undaunting for them is, is one of the keys to our UX. So we've created an iOS app. We're launching an Android app here this quarter. Um, we walk you through the onboarding. So once you download the app, we, we do all the heavy lifting in the background with um, making sure you're of age, making sure you're in a valid state, um, getting you into a match or helping you create a match. Um, and then obviously the most important thing is helping you bring funds in from your you know, bank account, credit card, debit, account, debit card from some of our processing partners, folks like PayPal, uh, our partners there. Um, on the kind of what makes a special technology side, um, we spent uh, a lot of time, you know, for the better part of 2018 and 19, uh, creating some uh, proprietary AI and machine learning technology. And in essence, what we saw in the market is that many of the folks in our space were uh, taking what I call the self-reporting uh, path, which is uh, two players play a match on their particular platform. Um, there's very little understanding that what of what happens once you and I go into our Call of Duty match. From a data perspective, who won, who lost, who was cheating, all these different things that happen in gaming. Um, and then you have to come back in and kind of self-report and hopefully everyone tells the truth. And we traditionally know, especially with guys, right? Uh, ladies are more, more honest citizens, guys with money in betting. There's very little uh, truth to, to be told there. So we, we wanted to remove that hurdle. So what our tech We've got to catch is, up. It sounds like yes, we ladies got to catch up. We have to get where the ladies are, <laughs> exactly. We have, a, we have a little ways to go. Um, so what our, our AI tech does is we integrate that with streaming platforms. So folks like Twitch and YouTube gaming and Facebook gaming today, We've done our integration with Twitch and commercialized that. And so very easily, once the match starts, uh, the person that's created the match on play is denoted as our host. And that host has the requirement of streaming the match on Twitch, which obviously they've given us the okay with their credentials to monitor that match. 
And in essence, our AI is monitoring that match on a frame by frame basis. So we're playing the referee, right? Think of us as that perspective. Um, and we're making sure everyone's good citizens, everyone's of age, you know, everyone has placed their money. We've escrowed those funds before the match starts, which is an important factor in the whole wager space. And we don't see that happen with a lot of uh, folks. And then obviously during that course of frame by frame monitoring, we can see some really cool things, right? We can understand behavior, right? So how do I play a higher or lower ranked player? Um, what are my wager habits in those moments? So there's a lot of cool analytics that are coming out of our data sets and we think there'll be many more. Clearly the most important piece is at the end of the match, we can determine uh, that the match is over and we also can understand who's won or lost that match. And so we remove that friction completely from each gamer to have to have that weight of proving they won. At the end of the match, we say, uh, hey, Sean beat Bob, the score was three to one, and we unlock that jackpot. Of course, it's technology. We, we get you know 99% of those matches right, but we always give our users the ability to um, question or uh, you know, say, I don't think you guys got it quite right. And we have a whole process for going back and looking at the tapes, as they say. Um, the last part of that that's super important and interesting is that we're starting to see out of that monitoring and data ingestion during the course of the match is that's yielding to other trigger points for monetization. So we, we think there's things on the horizon from a product perspective, like not just wagering on the end of the match, but also uh, maybe who's going to have the most touchdowns at halftime, uh, who will have the most kill, kill shots, um, these micro wagering events that do nothing but increase the opportunity for our users to make money uh, and give us other inflection points to add value. Um, yeah, no, brilliant. Um, Sean, I've already told you, uh, I think as we were, as we were prepping for this, that, you know, kind of, again, knowing this space and knowing the opportunity in space, you know, the opportunity is just really exciting to see, you know, to see the platform come to life. Um, talk to us a little bit about, you know, the technology behind it and, you know, AI, how did you, you know, what role does it play? How, you know, how how was it trained right in order to be able sure. to define such a specific moment in um in time of the actual game to solve the to solve the problem yeah so interesting story there i had been wrestling with uh i knew what what i wanted the platform to do i, I wasn't quite sold on and knew what technology would help us get there because clearly uh, what most companies try to do is, is get a API deal, right, with a publisher. And, and those are tough for young companies to pull off. Plus, you don't bring a lot of value to the market by, by providing that or, or closing that kind of deal. So uh, lucky enough, I was, uh, as a tech investor, investing with some folks in an AI company. Um, and that company had uh, done some really cool things with some NASA AI engineers. So um, I sheepishly asked them, Hey, could could you guys help me figure out you know AI machine learning for the gaming space? Uh, thinking that's a, a lot lower bar than what they had done with the space center, space station, right? Um, but yet and still, uh, we're able to uh, really solve the problem, right? Pretty quickly. Um, uh, the machine learning pieces is, is the important factor today. Obviously, using some ingredients around computer vision technology. So obviously, we're triangulating against things that are on the screen for each game. So every game we cover is kind of a uh, special recipe because not only are we looking at score and time, we're looking at uh, players on that screen and also achievements. And so achievements are different clearly in every type of game. So we're, we're, we're building that up um, on a case by case basis. The, the training side of it is obviously where the secret sauce is too, right? We, we use a lot of data that's publicly available and then we generally have our own core focus groups by game to make sure we're picking up on the nuances of each game before we re release it. And so we typically can kind of put a game together and release it within a couple of weeks. Um, and hopefully I, over time, we'll, we'll get that, that period of uh, training uh, even lower. A future view that we're super bullish on is, uh, is neural uh, computing, right? We think that there's an opportunity to take what we've created here in the very near future and have the system actually learning on the fly and then making decisions. Those could be wager decisions. Those could be brand relationships that we pull into the middle of a bet um, or a wager. So we, we think there's a ton of opportunity ahead of us, um, but that's what makes us also different. Play as a data company first 
um, that is leveraging our capabilities to provide monetization for, for the gaming audience. Um, and then let's talk it, let's kind of take a step back again and like talk about the marketplace, right? Obviously there's some betting platforms that, you know, we're, we're familiar with, right? There's Spanduel. I think your, you know, your co-founder comes from, comes from that world and DraftKings, which obviously have made so much noise in the past few years and opened really kind of a new, new market. Um, yeah. so we're, is play operating in the same ecosystem? Is it a different ecosystem? Is it an ecosystem of its own? Yeah, so I, I like to tell people we're cousins of uh, FanDuel and DraftKings, right? Um, we do have their DNA in our organization and uh, Daily Fantasy was a, a, a big inspiration, right? What, what they created in that market. But the gaming market is different. Um, than uh, regulated wagering uh, from a casino perspective and what DraftKings and FanDuel are doing today with William Hill and others. And it's also different uh, from a user perspective than Daily Fantasy. It, um, I think people don't realize that the crossover of uh, a, a user betting on a you know a Denver Broncos game on DraftKings isn't always the same person that's playing you know NBA 2K and wanting to wager on that. Um, and so from that DNA, we think that there's an opportunity to build a new industry with new leaders in that space. Um, does not mean that uh, like all technology businesses, there won't be uh, conglomerates and, and M&A activity that takes place around the larger regulated wagering space where you know, those players play and, and we're, we're close to all those companies and, and think there's opportunities from an investment and some strategic value. But yeah, we, we think that you need to build this organically um, to, to kind of lead in this space, which is the, our goal here for the next, you know, few years. Yeah. And then, um, like monetization, you, you, you know, you brought it up a few times, you mentioned monetization opportunities, et cetera. So, you know, what are, you know, beyond the kind of maybe more, um, you know, walk us through that process, what's in it for the user, right? Beyond kind of like, okay, you know, I get a, I get a chance to win money. How does it actually work? Yeah, so just to put a fine point on that one, um, one of the key differences with our platform is by, by tokenizing the entry fee, which generally is about a dollar, right? Sometimes can be lower based on the packages users buy those tokens in. Um, a user can basically wager almost any amount of money. So your winning capability is almost limitless for that dollar. Um, and so that's a key difference where we don't take a piece of that action um, as the markets is today. Uh, the other pieces that we'll layer into the equation is we're starting to have a brand partnerships that are signed um, and layer into those wager moments. Brands are starting to really like that narrative because uh, we give them a one-to-one -one or two-to-two -two relationship with our user conversation. So as two people are wagering, we'll drop Doritos in the middle of that or DoorDash. Um, and they're offering all kinds of opportunities. It could be you know, free delivery. If you do certain achievements in your game, it could be 10% off based on you playing all weekend, right? And so we're creating a rewards type model that we think brands are, are really bullish around. Um, it's a key opportunity that's different than the conversation they're having in professional esports because we're really down in the consumerism bucket of the general gamer. There's a lot of monetization that can happen for, for both play, the brand, and for our users. And then lastly, because we've taken a data platform approach with our AI initially, we think there's also a huge B2B kind of pass SaaS licensing opportunity for us. There are many gaming tournament platforms on the planet um, on the micro and macro level. And in many cases, none of them have our tech. And so we can help them scale the number of matches that can be uh, validated with aligning with our uh, platform approach. So we think there's a licensing opportunity as well for the business. And how's reception, uh, you know, has been to date, right? Like you called that uh, multiple partners, right? Obviously there's the audience and, and the consumer who is the, you know, the key focus. So it'd be really awesome to hear, you know, the consumer, um, you know, more about the consumer engagement on the platform and their experience, their journey, um, as well as um, the actual interest from some of the partners that you have, um, that you have called out. Yeah, so I think that the, the experience um, and feedback has been, out of the site, right? There's, I think there's a, a ton of users that this is their first time really engaging around um, wagering uh, in a safe manner. And so uh, that conversation has been, you know, really highly regarded from that perspective. 
Um, our brands, uh, I think even with COVID, right, where brands took a step back um, from engaging are really bullish, I think, in 2021 around uh, being able to not only engage with this gamer audience and really hard to approach 18 to 35 year old market, but to do it in a way that's actionable and measurable, right? So the ability to, you know, put things out there that can be triggered and engaged on uh, is an important factor. So I think from that perspective, it's been, you know, high success, right? But clearly we want to now drive engagement, you know, uh, downloads of our, our platform on the various um, mobile platform stores um, and then drive key KPIs this year around, uh, you know, DAUs, MAUs, things of that nature, but all been, very good, well, well, highly received thus far. So what, what, what's the future of play? Where, where do you see yourself and kind of that um, larger gaming space and industry? And what's kind of like, where do you see the company growing, growing into? I understand it's in kind of very, very early stages right now not in terms of your, you, you coming up with it and the inception sure. of the company itself, you know, in that journey, but more so specifically now that the product is in consumer's hands. Yeah, so I think what you'll, you'll see from play is a, is a couple of things. Um, we will take the ecosystem approach of, of uh, winning the market, right? So we started in, with a B2C um, uh, application in, in real estate with our iOS and soon to be Android app. Um, but ultimately, play will integrate where the user activity is. And so I think because we, we've democratized at the streaming level, we, we're talking to, to players and platforms where we can integrate our service at that uh, instance, right? So you, in the future, you may not have to have uh, an application open and running to wager on play. You may be able to do it directly from your computer screen or your smart TV um you know think in that regard we also are bullish and working on some opportunities around original programming um so you know uh, we saw what programming could do and and accelerated the poker industry um, at its heights um uh, and aligning that with traditional sports and so we think there's a clear opportunity for us to take um, our sauce and opportunity in the video gaming space and kind of create that same amateur competitive kind of market programming um, in, in the same regard poker did. And so, you know, that along with being a classic data tech company, trying to make the tech better, right? Trying to make the tech more bulletproof um, and, and in that expanding that into uh, more B2B B opportunities uh, from, from a, a larger perspective. So we have a lot on our table, but we're, we're trying to remain obviously focused on the areas that will move the needle, build a much bigger valuation for us, but also create better experiences for our players. And then, um, Sean, this isn't the first company that you have founded, um, right? And not the first company that you have built from ground up. How is this company, considering that, you know, Play um, opens a completely new opportunity and literally a new ecosystem, right? I'm sure there's a level of education that, that comes with it. Education, you know, educating consumers, educating partners, educating investors. So, um, you know, can you talk a little bit about your kind of entrepreneurial journey specifically with play and how that is, you know, similar or maybe different to some of the other companies that you have founded? Yeah, I still have the uh, bullet holes and, and knife cuts from all those other experiences. So as I think back on my career and, and my co-founders, Christine as well, um, we broke ground in a lot of key markets, whether it's entrepreneur or even with some larger companies. Um, and the key with that is patience, right? When you're, to your point, when you're uh, creating new marketplaces or one of the early players in a new industry, um, there is a lot of education that has to go along with that. And uh, I was on a panel the other day on Clubhouse and, and the key kind of illness that most entrepreneurs have is the clock, right? We want things to go ha happen faster. Um, and so I, I generally have learned that patience is a part of that as long as you're kind of taking care of all the things in your wheelhouse on that particular day. Um, but yes, we're, we're, we're trying to teach users in many cases that this is a very new thing to them to be able to wager and make money off of your gaming uh, passion. But also from an investor perspective, most experienced investors understand that, right? Uh, it takes a while to get that momentum going. 
Um, every business does not come out and it's an instant unicorn that happens at different stages and at different velocities. But I think one of the key opportunities is, is understanding the psych psychology of your users um, and being able to make small tweaks, maybe a pivot, um, as you see, you know, things not working or a bigger opportunity, right? And so uh, in many cases, I'll give you an example. You know, we were intentional in the U.S. in our launch here, um, not really to go fully into crypto. That was something that I'm super passionate about. Um, but we know that as we move into international markets, U.K., Germany, uh, Asia, PAC, crypto is, is, is used on a daily basis, uh, unlike it's not, unlike it, it's not use, used here yet or adopted here yet. And so um, we, we well in tune will introduce that globally. But yeah, patience is the key word, you know, through that whole process. Um, Sean, um, I think we're kind of coming to uh, coming to a close. Uh, coming to a close here. I have so many more questions. I'm sure the audience does as well. Um, but. Um, just wanted to thank you for your time. I wanted to thank you for the, uh, you know, for, for your time to come here to share your experience. And I think we're all going to be very excited uh, witnesses to your journey, to the journey um, of, of your success and of play um, really kind of, yeah, uh, really changing, changing the entire landscape. Um, so thanks again. Thank you so much, and, and thank you for the, the entire team at UCLA uh, for, for having me and having play. Um, we, we're super excited about uh, our future, but uh, we know that this audience is uh, uh, very attuned to, to new business and models, so we appreciate being here. I think you're going to have a few people signing up. Can they? We'd, we'd love to have you. Yeah, you can find us on the <laughs> iOS store or uh, online at play.me. Great. Um, I'll see you there. <laughs> Thank you.